Hey friends, it has been a while and I am feeling very rusty. I don't know if this video will ever even get published um, or if it is, how much it will be edited. Um, my thought was to just kind of come on here and make a, uh, was it, I was gonna say quick little update, but knowing me, it probably won't be that quick. <laughs> but uh, a low key, minimally edited kind of easy update um, just to say hi and get back in the swing of it a little bit since I haven't filmed anything, um, well, anything for YouTube or anything for a class, anything with like my actual camera and mic and my full setup and all that. I haven't filmed anything for months. Um, I'm not even going to go look at the last time so, because it will just make me feel too bad about it. So, um, yeah, um, I am going to be filming some videos today. I'm going to be filming some other stuff. So I felt like this would be a good way to kind of get my feet wet and get back into it and say hi to you all um, since it has been so long. So um, first up, the elephant in the room. Where have I been? <laughs> Why have I not been making videos? Um, yeah, I feel like if you have watched this channel for a while, um, if you've seen more than like one video, if you're a regular watcher, um, you definitely have heard me talking about this over the last couple of years. You know, I started on YouTube in 2016, which I can't even wrap my brain around that it's been that long. Um, and I really hit it hard for those first few years and I was super regular putting things out every week and my channel was growing and I was getting lots of views and it was just like, I think I was really enjoying that process. And also like at that time, I was definitely doing full-time client work. I mean, I was bringing in a full-time income, um, but I would very regularly have like several weeks at a time where there just wasn't any project, any, any client project that I was working on. So it was so natural and easy to be like doing client projects and then be making videos. And I would do them kind of in batches. And um, yeah, I really, I liked that process. It was going well. And I think I, I, at the time I remember thinking like, wow, it's so much easier to grow on YouTube than it is to grow anywhere else. And, um, this is not going to be a whole video of me complaining about audience growth or engagement or whatever, but like, I feel like that's just kind of a part of the whole feelings soup of this whole thing. Um, so yeah, and then for the past couple of years, since probably 2019, 2020s over the past few years um, that I've been like way busier just like very consistently client work booked for every week which is so great um, I've been having this sort of identity crisis because I have not been able to put as much time into YouTube and as much thought into like making the kinds of videos that I um, that I was making in the beginning like a lot of vlogs and kind of more time intensive things um, and um, algorithms changed growth changed engagement changed so many moving pieces and I feel like I was getting all of this like satisfaction and fun and enjoyment from doing client work and YouTube is feeling more and more like this obligation, like this thing that I needed to do. And then I was feeling like it wasn't going very well and I didn't know how to tell whether it was going very well. Um, you know, I, you guys were always so kind and I would get comments and lovely notes and still like every week emails from people who watch different videos and are um, uh, relate to them and feel encouraged and all of that, which is so wonderful. Um, but yeah, I felt like I was going through this kind of identity crisis of like, why am I doing this? And then last year, um, I really doubled down, not so much on YouTube. I mean, I was still doing quite a bit of YouTube stuff, but like really doubled down on classes. And I've been hearing from all these friends who do classes. You need to do your own platform. Um, not just have stuff on Skillshare. I love Skillshare. Skillshare is great, but like to have another platform as well. So you're not totally dependent on Skillshare. And I put all of this energy into that. And again, if you were following me, uh, and you were watching videos last year, you know, there was the whole drama with that um, production company where things didn't really go in a good direction and I had to bow out. Um, so, uh, last year just ended like December, January, um, 
ended with me feeling super burnt out from classes and I feel like that really kind of extended into videos and I kept trying to push through and I think I am somebody who is often like a little bit skeptical of the idea of burnout and I'm not saying that well whatever I am saying that <laughs> I'm just gonna say what I think and it's what applies for me and of course that's not necessarily what applies for you so take it with a grain of salt but um i have found in my own life that at times when i thought i was burnt out i really wasn't actually kind of focused in enough on on what was motivating me on my why for doing something um and uh yeah so so all that to say burnout what, or the idea of burnout was something I didn't really make a lot of space for in in my own life, and um, and I do think with respect to videos, I really had just gotten gotten to burnout because I just couldn't like I kept trying to throughout those whole couple of years I kept trying to like reignite the fire and feel like I felt about it in the beginning and I just couldn't I just couldn't get there. And, um, and I think that ultimately led me to to this place of like questioning why am I doing this? Like why am I why am I putting videos out there? Why am I making videos? And I would tell myself things like, well, it's for those people who like feel really encouraged by it, and it's to share the information to to give what I did get all of that. And yes, that is true, um, but um, it, it wasn't enough. <laughs> <laughs> to motivate me to do it and um, I feel like I've wanted to my tendency as a person is to like I can get pretty deep with stuff I really like thinking about things I feelings and ideas are like my two favorite topics and um, and I think I was really wanting to have like this cohesive like ah oh, yes this is the reason why I'm having a hard time with this and this is what I need to do to move forward um, with respect to YouTube and classes and um, and after having stepped away for a little while um, albeit unintentionally I wasn't like you know what I really am feeling burnt out and I need a break I just stopped making videos <laughs> and uh, which I feel like is emblematic of how taking rest often goes for me where I'm somebody who just I think because of having dealt with so much um, health stuff in my um, in my 20s like now in my 30s I'm just like very uh, at one, at one level, understanding of the fact that like, I need to take care of my physical body and I do a lot of things to do that. Like I'm really intentional with my diet and with exercise and with sleep and with all of that. But um, in terms of like m motivation or working, like I will push myself so hard because I have this appreciation for how good I feel now compared to how terrible I used to feel and what I what I could get done even then but you know now that I feel pretty good most days um, because of my health being under better control I yeah I do have this tendency of like wanting to push 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 and ultimately I had to kind of ask like where is where is this going like what is the what is the end game like even though these other things that i say are motivating me like to help people which i really do want to do like when i step back and look at it the fact is that is not motivating me like because i've been saying that it was motivating me for the last couple of years and um when i actually step back and look at it i'm still dragging my feet i'm still having to like really twist my own arm to get things done to make content and I never feel like that about painting I just uh, and that that's part of the contrast too like I used to have some of those feelings related to painting but now like it's just all I want to do like I just love painting I would do it every minute of every day well not every minute of every day because I obviously I adore my family and I have to be with my family too um, but in terms of like working time like when I have working time I, all I want to do is is paint and um, and that was such a stark contrast with like how easy it was relatively to motivate myself to paint compared to how difficult it was to motivate myself to make videos and I just ended up questioning the motivation that I was telling myself <laughs> was the impetus behind all this to help people and to to give what I didn't get but then when I look and see well is that motivating me to make videos like no it's really not and um, ultimately I feel like I had I got to a point where 
I realized that even though I'm this person who wants to have like all these deep meaning and reasons and to understand things at this kind of like metaphysical level, um, this was actually a pretty simple question. And, um, and I have been ignoring the simplicity of it. And it, it's just the question or yeah, I guess the question of uh, the issue, the issue is busyness. The issue is like how, um, much more flexible my schedule was in the beginning when I started making YouTube videos. And, you know, I, I had all of the, both because I had no kids at that time. And then also because I wasn't as busy with client work. Uh, so yeah, for two reasons, like I had so much more flexibility and now I have two kids. I have a five-year-old and a three-year-old and I'm working full time. And I'm pretty much always, I mean, I'm working as an illustrator here <laughs> in my studio full time. And I'm pretty much always completely booked with client stuff. And um, so there's probably, you know, yes, maybe some of those motivational factors and like, where is this going? Why am I here? The existential questions that I so love to think about and <laughs> tend to be the things that, oh my gosh, what's in my eye? Sorry. That tend to be the things that I will get in like a mind rut on over and over again. Yes, some of those may be relevant, but the, the simplest factor, just looking at my life then and looking at my life now is I had a lot more flexibility then and a lot less flexibility now. And the reason I feel like I'm, I'm coming to this realization and why I'm actually making this video right now is that I have had an unexpected um, little breather the last week and a half uh, I haven't actually been doing client work because, um, well, for a few different reasons, like I'm, I'm engaged in multiple different projects. I'm working on four different projects right now, but they all were kind of paused. They're all bigger projects. So they're things with a lot of people involved and, uh, that takes longer to get feedback and to turn around, uh, revisions and all of that. So I've just been kind of sitting on my hands and that flexibility has made me feel like, oh, wow, you know, what would be fun to make a video. <laughs> and, um, realizing that it's just that simple that I'm just too that I'm just busy and it's hard for me to do this other stuff that isn't the main thing for me and is probably never going to be the main thing for me I'm probably always going to be primarily an illustrator first um, and then somebody who also makes content um, and and back in 2016 I wasn't sure how that would swing you know it could have gone either way I suppose being somebody who like primarily makes content and the illustration is a part of that and those are both valid uh, wonderful paths but the path that my career has gone down is more of illustration and, and art primary and then content secondary um, yeah, so just kind of acknowledging that and the simplicity of that and that there doesn't have to be some deep existential reason why I haven't been making videos. It's mostly just I'm busy and it's hard for me to, um, it's, it's increasingly harder for me to find the motivation to say, yes, I'm going to get this done. I'm going to burn this candle at both ends. I'm going to squeeze myself as hard as I can. Um, I just don't want to do that. <laughs> and uh, so I think what the, where that leads me um, is to essentially what I've already been doing for the past couple of months, which is like when things are busy, I probably won't make as much content. And um, when I have a chance to, when there's a little bit of a breather, um, I, I will. And um, I'm hoping, what I'm hoping is that by coming to this place of acceptance <laughs> uh, and realizing like the, the simple kind of reason for all of this, that it will make it easier for me ultimately to be semi-regular <laughs> with stuff. I make no promises because I know I've been saying that for the last couple of years and I still haven't gotten into a swing of it, but I think I've been in this, you know, form of some version of denial for the past couple of years because I've been thinking like there's some deep reason. And once I figure that out, then I will just be back to a weekly schedule and it will be no problem for me to get this done. But I haven't been, you know, doing one of the things that I'm always telling other people to do, which is to take an honest, look at the constraints of their lives. Um, again, something I learned from, from being, um, from dealing with so many health issues is just having to be very frank and realistic about like what the, the actual constraints of your own life are. And for me, um, some of that is just limitations around time, um, with respect to, to making videos, making content and all that. So, um, yeah, I feel like who, who knows if I, if I publish this, um, yeah, this is already probably going to be way too long of a video, but, um, I wrote some notes here for myself 
some other kind of updatey things that I figured since it has been so long, I would share with you all. Um, so um, the first one, uh, what, I, what I've been up to, the first thing I've been up to is client work, <laughs> which is um, great. And um, I have um, been continuing to do stuff for regular clients like um, Southern Living, Milk Street Magazine, and Safe and Fair. Um, and then have worked with some um, really fun new clients as well, um, things I can't really share yet, <laughs> and new projects that are starting that I also can't share yet. But um, it's been a really good first start of 2022, well, first start, first half of 2022 um, with respect to client work. So um, that's been great. I've been enjoying it. Um, I, um, I guess this is a client kind of related thing, tangentially client um, work, uh, and that is making um, content for YouTube, like content that was commissioned by YouTube. Um, an agency got in touch with me earlier this year, and this is, I'm doing my second round of it right now, but um, it's a, an agency that works with um, YouTubers and content creators to, um, to make shorts. So YouTube has commissioned me to make five shorts, and um, they're I, again, there's something like when I have the time and the flexibility and, you know, because this is a client project, I'm able to kind of like block off space for it in my calendar. And when I do that, I, I really, I really do have fun doing that. And it's a, yeah, it's a, um, a type of creativity that I enjoy. It's probably, you know, always going to be second place to the actual drawing and painting for me, which is just the thing that I love the most. But when there is space for it, it's fun. Um, so yeah, that, that has been cool to have YouTube as a client. Um, so if you guys see shorts coming up in my feed, um, definitely give those some attention, um, like them, comment, whatever, all that. Um, I think that helps. Um, so what was the other thing? Um, oh, and then non-client related, like in, it, still in terms of like making art, but not related to making art for clients. Um, I feel like an, a, another thing that I have been working on in these past few months um, of not making as much content has been um, trying to make some space for making personal work. So um, I think, you know, I, again, back in like 2016, 2017, when I wasn't as busy, um, part of that rhythm of like going back and forth between like making stuff for clients and making content, another piece of that puzzle was um, doing self-initiated projects or passion projects or whatever. And I was always doing them. Like I pretty much always had one of those or, or maybe even multiple um, of those going while I was doing these other things. And um, that has become increasingly difficult to do for the, some of the same reasons why it's become difficult to make content. And um, I've gotten more and more focused in my, um, in my passion projects or my side projects self-initiated work, whatever you want to call it. I've gotten more and more focused in it over the last few years. Um, and what I mean by focus is like they, they're, none of them are ever open-ended. There's always a reason. Like I'm either doing it because I want to get good at some specific skill, like a new media or doing backgrounds or, you know, uh, working at a different scale or a different speed. There's some like concrete skill that I want to work on, or I'm building out like a particular section of my portfolio, showing, showing off essentially a skill that I already think I have and that I want to be hired to do. Um, but they're, they've, they're always super strategic and some of them are, are, well, no, not some, they're all, they're all fun. They're all drawing and painting. So of course I enjoy doing them. Um, but I had been feeling this increased sense of like a need to just mess around, I guess, and to have an open-ended project that didn't have, um, uh, maybe that's different than just messing around, but I guess to, to structure a personal project that wasn't aimed at a specific target that was aimed at just the the practice itself um and i guess man that's that sounds how is that different from working on a skill um i don't know maybe i, I haven't figured out how to articulate that yet but um but i'm i'm working on it <laughs> that's, that's what i want to say um i uh, am for the first time in years making this series of paintings that is not to work on a specific skill not to learn how to do some new technique not to fill a hole in my portfolio not to attract a particular kind of client i just am making some paintings that i want to make and that feel challenging to me and i am trying to 
to mess around a little bit with reality. <laughs> Usually I'm pretty straightforward with like, you know, just doing more or less, um, you know, versions of realism, either like very realistic or like slightly stylized, but all kind of in that general realism bucket. And I don't really mess with things too much. Um, but with these, uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen a couple little sneak peeks of them, but I haven't been sharing really the whole thing yet. Um, these are, um, yeah, experimenting more with like kind of transparency and things being there, but not really there. And it, it's different than straight up real, realism. And I've never done anything like that before, or I have had the idea for those kinds of things and had even like some of these exact images like in my head and thought of them, but have never attempted um, or, you know, I would maybe get to like the thumbnail phase and then say, you know, uh, no, that's dumb. Or like, I'm gonna, I, I would become like really afraid that I would, um, get stuck in the way that I used to get stuck, uh, before I started, um, making art like again for the first time, you know, after having gone to school and had those four years where I wasn't making art, um, when I came back to it in like 2013, 2014, um, that, uh, I, I was just afraid that I would go back to where I had been before that, where I, I really was kind of paralyzed and couldn't ever finish anything. So um, it has been really exciting and maybe like one of the most exciting things that's going on in for me in terms of like art, uh, just to see that I um, have grown enough from where I was at then because I had some of those same visual conceptual ideas then and I couldn't, I couldn't get through. I couldn't actually like make them happen because I would just get stuck. We could have a whole other video about that, about why I would get stuck and we can talk about that if you guys want to. But um, it's felt kind of miraculous to see like, oh wow, like I finished a couple of these paintings and I can't, I can't believe it. <laughs> and I love the process of making them. And I'm like, you know, of course there's, there are things that I would change and things that I will do differently. Um, but overall I'm kind of okay and happy even with how they turned out. And I'm planning some other ones and I've, um, asked for reference photos on Instagram. Uh, so, um, some of you guys have sent me reference photos to work from and it's just really great. And I'm feeling super excited about that. And, um, and a nice thing about that is that even when I am busy with client work, that is something that's relatively easy to kind of fit in as opposed, as opposed, unfortunately, to making videos because to, you know, to make a video, I have to like get out all the stuff and change my setup and, uh, move my desk closer to the window. And it's, it's, um, out of the flow with the other stuff. Whereas if I'm doing client work, it's pretty easy to just say, okay, I'm going to spend 45 minutes in the morning. First thing when I get in or an hour, or however long in the morning um, when I first get in to work on this painting, this personal painting, and then I'm going to um, switch gears to do client work, which is exactly what I've been doing, you know, all these past couple of years when I've been doing the more strategic, um, commercially focused personal projects. But, um, <clears throat> excuse me, this time I'm doing it for the self-initiated, just purely making them because I want to make them a, a true passion project. Um, and yeah, it feels really good and I'm super excited about it. So, um, a couple of other things, <clears throat> sorry guys, it's very dry in here because of the air conditioner. All right. So, um, a couple other fun things I wanted to update you all on, um, back in the spring, back in May, um, I, uh, met up for the second time. I, I did this once last fall with, uh, my friends, uh, Fran and Fabiola. Um, we went to a cabin in the woods and just drew and painted and ate food for a couple of days and it was so fun and we grew the group a little bit to where it was six of us and we went back to the mountains again back to the Poconos got a different cabin well it was more like a house but got a house and then did the same thing drew and painted and um, that was in May and uh, we called it art camp this time and it was just uh, so much fun and so restorative and um, I can't recommend <laughs> other people said this and I heard it and I always thought like well I'm not ready for that or I don't need that right now or um, 
nobody will want to do that with me or whatever. Um, but I can't recommend enough finding other friends who are artists, even if they're doing things that are a little bit different from you. Um, but friends that are in a similar or close to enough, um, place in their careers, oops, screen locked me out of my notes, um, and finding a way to get together in person. So, you know, the people that ended up going were all people that kind of live in the same general region, like within a few hours of each other. Um, driving nobody had to fly or anything and um, yeah there's just something magical about being with other artists in person so um, if there are people that you are friends with online that you feel safe doing that with um, I, I would yeah I really can't recommend that enough and I'm um, thinking through like how we did it like for, for um, Fab and I we talked on the phone first for probably like a year before we started talking about that and then, uh, and then decided to invite Fran and that was for the first one. So, uh, and then for the second one, the people that were invited were all people that we already knew that each, each one of us invited one more person. Um, so it's not like it was just like some random stranger that online that we had had no interaction with. And then we're like, Hey, you want to stay in a cabin in the woods for a few days? Like that would be creepy. Um, but yeah, if there are people that you are making like real mutual friendships with online, trying to find a way to get together in person, um, yeah, it has been really, really good. Um, and on that same note, I went to Icon for the first time this year. And if you haven't heard of it, Icon is the illustration conference. Um, and it's a biannual conference. So somewhere different in a different city every two years throughout the U.S. And this one had uh, originally been scheduled for 2020 and I had my ticket then and that was going to be my first year going um, but then it was canceled for obvious reasons <laughs> so I just held on to my ticket and um, Fabiola and then another person uh, another friend who was also at art camp Grace Michelli um, ended up going together to Icon the three of us and um, I got to meet um, lots of other internet friends there and um, spend time in person and that was really great too and um, lots of a very different vibe than art camp because it's you know like I think it was like six or seven hundred people there um, and lots of like talks and presentations um, which was good but like I, I don't know if this is like an introvert thing or a you know former homeschooler thing or just like a me thing but I, I have a very hard time like sitting still for a long time like for hours just like looking in one direction and not being physically active or engaged in some way um, I mean I can sit at my desk for <laughs> eight hours no problem um, and forget to drink and forget to go to the bathroom and all that but like for some reason like sitting in the auditorium was like that was challenging for me um, so that's like a learning that I'll take away for next time um, you know I'll I'll plan to go to like some probably smaller fraction of the presentations this year I was like trying to be there at all of them and then just be sitting down and like have to get up and walk around the block a few times and then come back um, but but overall I can't recommend it enough and I wish I had gone sooner and I, I would have gone sooner I would have gone in 2020 um, so I don't know if I went in 2020 I don't know if I would have still been feeling that way like oh I should have gone a few years ago but um, I definitely had this the sense that like Oh, you know, it, it was good and I'm glad I went and I will definitely be going to the next one, um, you know, barring any terrible unforeseen circumstances, which feels like a really <laughs> unlucky thing to say uh, as we sit here in 2022. But um, my plan is to go to the next one. Um, but I think if I had gone in like 2018, I would have, it would have been really good for me and I would have really benefited from it and learned a lot and probably like been able to move a little bit further forward in my career um, faster. And um, I, a thing that I am working on that is like not my favorite thing about myself, but is a challenge is just, I do have that tendency to like want to hole up and figure it out myself. Um, and um, going there really helped me realize, going to Icon helped me realize like, wow, that that would have been, taking a different approach would have really helped. And if I had gone to this sooner, even maybe a little bit before I thought I was ready, and I guess I probably wouldn't have even been saying 
you know, in 2018, I wouldn't have said, I'm not ready. I think I probably would have said like, I don't need this or like, I can figure this out on my own. And that's just not true. <laughs> so, um, well actually, no, it is true. I eventually did figure stuff out. Um, and, um, I have continued to figure things out, but like there, there have been, multiple instances over the past couple of years where I've just really realized, wow, like there are some limitations to what you can just figure out on your own. And you do need, even if it's not somebody else, like telling you what the answer is, you just need to like be around other people who are working on the same problem. So, um, making actual art friends and seeing them in real life and then, um, doing something like icon. I know there's another conference coming up, um, in October called creative works that a lot of people like, I'm not sure yet if I'm going to go to that. It kind of depends on schedule stuff yet. Um, but I, I may be going to that one too. So, um, yeah, I can't really recommend that enough. Um, seeing people in person, going to events, um, wish I had done it sooner for sure. Um, so I think those are kind of the big updates for now. Um, I um, do have a few other videos planned and now that I've warmed up a little bit with this one, I think I am gonna record some. Um, coming up, I'm gonna be doing one on finding a market for your work. So how to kind of figure out where to place your illustration work in a market, which can help inform you um, inform your strategy for like the kinds of personal projects that you make. So like earlier when I mentioned how for the past few years, every personal project I've done has been like specifically aimed at a particular target, either a skill or a type of illustration or a client or whatever. Like, so if you want to do that practice, which I do recommend, um, whatever stage you're in, um, I, I think it's really helpful to know what market you're aiming for, like what direction you're aiming at. So um, I'm going to do a video about that and then another video kind of related about how to structure a self-initiated project. Um, so once you know like what market you're aiming at, um, how to figure out like basically how to build the parameters, how to build the container um, for your personal project. And then I'm going to do another one about um, specific skills that are helpful to have and to work on if you want to work with clients. Um, so let me know if there are other videos that you'd like to see, if you want to do a Q&A or a live, um, other topics, whatever. <laughs> I am open um, and it may take me a while, as I mentioned, since I'm going to just be honest with myself and be making videos when I am able to. Um, I will try to batch them together. Um, you know, I think that will help some. Um, but yeah, it, it might be a little while, but if you suggest something that I haven't done or if you suggest something and a lot of people like it, um, put it in the comments, um, then I will really go out of my way to, to make that video. Um, yeah, so I hope... <laughs> I usually say like, I hope this has been helpful, but this has just been like, you know, me chatting with you. So I'm going to say thank you for listening <laughs> and, um, thanks for sticking around. Um, I appreciate all of you. I appreciate the comments, um, the kind words that you leave and I appreciate you being here. So, um, thanks for the chat and I will see you next time. Bye.